Folks, we have an exciting, magical episode for you today. We're going to tell a story that needs to be heard. It's one about the beautiful natural resources we have in this country. Look around me, the rainforest of British Columbia on the south coast. And we're going to meet with the forestry company who helps manage and initiate this with SFI. We're also going to meet with a BC biologist from the ministry who is part of the wildlife management to synergize this together so outdoors men and women like you and I can enjoy this. Today, this is fast action, in your face, heart pumping stuff. We're gonna be in a chopper, flying through the mountains, the rivers and the canyons, doors off with a tranquilizer gun and trying to get in the Roosevelt Elks territory to get them on the ground and help be part of science and conservation and management. But first, we're going to be joined by SFI National Director Danny Karsh. Danny, it is so good to finally be here with Keith, you. Keith, absolute pleasure is my mind. And look at the backdrop. The rainforest on the south coast of beautiful British Columbia, standing below a 500-year-old Douglas fir. Yeah, what a majestic specimen this is. Now tell me about SFI. What does it stand for? What's the mission? SFI stands for the Sustainable Forestry Initiative. It is a non-profit forestry certification program that practices sustainable forest management here in North America. So it's the standard that, that logging companies meet to be able to harvest. Exactly. You know, in Canada here, we have some of the most stringent forestry management practices in the world. And how much land are you responsible for helping out with that? Over 55 million hectares right here in 55 Canada. 55 million. Exactly. That's a lot of land and we're so blessed to live in a Definitely. country that big. Now this isn't all about just work and messaging. This is about having a lot of fun and getting out helping with science and with wildlife. And today we're going to be joining Daryl Reynolds, the bio from the BC Ministry. And we're going to be getting up in a chopper and actually getting in on real live Roosevelt elk and all their majesty and splendor and darting them for science and getting on putting a collar on them. Well, I'm looking very forward to that because a lot of these Roosevelt elk are feeding in some of these amazing areas of certified forest. So I'm looking very forward to getting out there. Well, let's go. Let's do it. All right. Historically, there were six different species of elk in North America. Two of those species lived here in British Columbia, the Rocky Mountain elk and the Roosevelt or Roosevelt elk. By the turn of the century, almost all populations of the Roosevelt elk in BC were extirpated. In recent years, the BC Ministry and many other organizations have come together to help raise funds and manpower to restore the Roosevelt elk population here in BC. BC biologist Daryl Reynolds has been one of the main biologists working on this project since the early 90s, and we had some time to sit down and talk with Daryl about the reintroduction process. The elk recovery project has been so successful because of the dedicated partnership of the Habitat Conservation Trust Fund, the province of BC, many volunteer groups and others, and the monitoring and management of the elk. We do this through aerial surveys, through hunter surveys, and through collaring of elk. When I started here in the, the early 90s, we started with a population of about 27 elk on the southern mainland coast of British Columbia. We've relocated 492 elk and released them in 23 separate population units. We now boast a population of over 1,400 elk and is supplying hunting opportunities for First Nations, residents, and commercial opportunities. This week, we're gonna be doing some research on Roosevelt elk. This process is gonna involve darting and mature elk from a helicopter. This is a very challenging process. So first, we're gonna survey for them, locate herds in open areas that would be suitable to dart an animal, and we're gonna fly in and try and put a dart in a mature elk's rump. We'll get in the, on the ground, locate it, and dress it up with a GPS radio collar for future study and information. Incredible. It's amazing to see the vast amount of timber in this country. I, I really 
I knew it was here, but to see it is something else. Yeah, we're truly blessed to have this natural resource, and uh, British Columbia is certainly not shy of having a pristine forest out here, so very privileged. Responsible forestry practices are very important to the future growth and health of our forest, and companies like SFI make sure strict guidelines for harvesting are followed. As you can see in SFI certified areas, not all the trees are cut, and for good reason. Clumps like this patch of trees are left in the middle of a harvested area to act as a safe zone for wildlife. Seed trees like these are left to deposit seeds and facilitate natural regrowth. And snag trees like this may not look important, but they actually allow birds of prey a perch to hunt from. These are just some of the examples Sustainable Forestry Initiative requires to ensure a future healthy forest and enjoyment for hunters, anglers and outdoor enthusiasts. As the group continued their flight over the breathtaking landscape of British Columbia, taking in the endless forests, pristine mirror-like waters and inspiring valleys, they came across some of BC's other renowned wildlife. Everything from a pair of mountain goats taking shelter in a cave to black bears out foraging, bald eagles landing in towering trees, and even an encounter with a grizzly bear making his way through a wet estuary. Having the opportunity to fly over this amazing province really lets you appreciate the incredible wildlife and scenery BC has to offer. After a little more searching, some Roosevelt elk were spotted in some SFI certified young forests. Strong numbers of adults and yearlings showed all the hard work and dedication from the many organizations and the individual people that have been helping reintroduce the Roosevelt elk back into BC were paying off greatly. After surveying a few herds, a group of bedded elk with one bull, perfect for darting and coloring, was picked for a darting attempt. With no time to waste, the crew flew to a nearby mountain to prep the helicopter. spotted four mature animals, one bull and three cows and a couple calves. They're in a really good location. So Daryl's in position, animals just firing up the machine. We staged over here about a kilometer away. You can glass them and see them bedded over there. And we're gonna go straight in at them, see if we can't get this bull. So here's hoping.
Okay, boys, that was as exciting as it gets. Daryl made an excellent shot. Hannibal got right in on this bull come out with Wills in his, his antlers, and then we see him go down. We make a hover exit, which is an unbelievable rush. Oh, it was incredible with. for me to experience that. And now it's time to go get him. Yeah, we got to get going, guys. The elk is down ahead. Somebody, you got to grab his head ahead. Okay, Keep it elevated. Airway. Yeah, All clear right. the airway. Should we read up this game trail? Absolutely. All right, let's go. Let's go. Okay, there he is. Yeah. He's just up ahead. Keep go ahead okay. and you take his head and keep okay. his airway clear. Oh my goodness. Look at the size of this. Oh wow. All right. Watch his legs. Okay. I'll take the hind. Okay, everybody okay. watch Hold his on. legs. Let's get on his back side. Take his head, please. Yep. Look at that velvet just hanging off there. He's half velvet, this guy. What a beautiful animal. I'm gonna give you a hand cue. Okay. I'll keep this on no, his eyes. Yeah. That goes over his nose. That goes over his nose. Okay. I'll prop his head up a bit. And I'm gonna hold his airway up as soon as you get that back over. Okay, you ready? Watch out for his legs, guys. I'm gonna bring him up. Okay. You got him. Get his airway going good. Yeah, get his airway open. Just like that, Daryl? Yeah, that just like that. Oh, okay. perfect. Excellent. Okay. Oh my goodness. He's breathing really well. He, he looks really good. Baby. And there's the dart right there. They're so majestic, these animals. It's a privilege to be here doing this today. The special? Unbelievable. Okay, we're putting, we're gonna put a tag on here with my phone number, and just in case some a hunter harvests this elk, or if somebody else finds it at some point in time, they can get in touch with me, and I can get the caller back. Excellent. Doing great work on these animals, Daryl. So impressive. Right there. You ever had a snoring elk in your hands, Danny? I'd have to say no to that one. So this is all good to go. Okay, yeah, so we can go like this. These are adjustable GPS collars, and we're gonna leave a lot of space on this. Um, the elk may be able to lose this when he loses his antlers, but at the same time, in the, during the rut, their neck swell, so we don't want to obstruct that at all. So that's a safety precaution. Yeah, absolutely. We want to do look after these elk as best as we can. Unbelievable. Yeah. Daryl, no, I know, I know this has a GPS on it and gives you a location, but what, what data are you looking to extract from that collar? This will collect the fix every three hours and will tell us the best habitats for these animals. It will allow us to plan development and lots of information about the most important habitats that are required by elk. So their feeding areas, their cover areas, yeah. their no, bedding it's a, areas. It's important for us to let, let the viewers know we didn't target a big five, six, seven year old mature huge bull because they're they're in their prime and you don't want to risk at all taking the best breeding stocks. We were looking for a two or three year old bull that would give you good indication what a male does but not one of those big giant ones at this point in time. Yeah, that's right. D those big ones are really hard to handle in this kind of conditions. Yeah. They struggle with the, with the drugs and stuff like that. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to get this collar. This collar is gonna be working for two to three years, collecting data, and then we'll release and we will go in the ground and pick it up and be able to use it again. This is about a 700 pound bull. Yeah, it looks like he may be just right around a little bit more than seven, 750, seven. yeah. Two to three year old bull? That's what it looks like, yeah. yeah. Okay, got, got great, great antlers. I mean, yeah. he's already started to do that fancy Roosevelt thing where he's got extra stuff coming out, the reddish tinge to him. I know there's blood on the antler here. He's literally just coming out of velvet. And the velvet back here, this tip's still fully covered by the velvet. And you know what? This is a special treat for me because we come from representing the hunters, you come from representing the animals, and you guys come from representing the forest. And together, we make a great team for Canada's natural resources. And that's what's such a privilege for us at Canada Rough, to be part of SFI, to be part of BC Ministry and work with you, Daryl, on, on the true, one of the leading biologists in the world if not the, on Roosevelt Elk. So thank you, gentlemen, because this is a moment I will never forget, and it's all part of great help and great support. And I know many, many people support you and your group, and many people support you and your group, and we feel the same way. So together, we're living in a beautiful country with beautiful resources. It's our pleasure. Yeah, you know. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to our page so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Also comment below with what you'd like to see next and don't forget to follow us on social media so you get to see all of our adventures across Canada.